Hi there, I'm John from SandboxRanch.com and today we're going to talk about version 2 of my popular banks. I can't believe that it's been a year since I've been, you know, I had the initial idea to actually start SandboxRanch.com and offer custom banks uh, for anybody and everybody. And I had a lot of goals with that business and they're slowly coming to fruition. Now the goal with me with this sort of business here is to make the best possible banks I can. And here's a great example of it. So this is version two and this is version one, or actually it's version probably 50 and this is version 75, but we'll just go with that. So you can see here, version two has a lot more room in it. And I created that room by, as you can see, you know, these things here come up a little bit more. These go down. Uh, these are widened across, as you can see. And all of these little tweaks and changes actually increase the surface area inside of the bank, which is what I want, the volume, right? And what you notice on, you know, for the banks on Amazon and those sort of places, the way they do their banks is they skimp out on the thickness. Now for me, these banks, like the, the depth you have here is actually more inside the bank, the volume of the you know the volume that you can put the coins into the bank is actually larger than the banks you get elsewhere and the way I do that is because I start off with a much thicker bank and I make the slabs myself and so that way I can control production all the way through now in this case here you'll notice that you actually have a wooden coin to start off with that's something I released a couple of months ago whenever you get an order for a bank you get a first coin with it now, what makes these banks sort of unique, other than me making every aspect of them, from the glue up, as, as you'll see throughout this video, all the way to production with the machine you see behind me here, is that they're actually functional and generational, which is what I wanted to do. Now, there's no point getting a bank, and you put a couple coins in it, and it's full. I, I don't see the purpose of that. I also don't see the purpose of having a bank like this, that falls on the ground and is destroyed immediately. Now, there's a lot of design things I've put into this, to make them a lot stronger, but at the end of the day, you still have a hardwood. Now, one of the biggest changes I've done with these banks is when I first started, I wanted about half an inch of material under here. So that means I've eaten up some of the volume inside, but the advantage of that is you have something incredibly rigid and strong. Now, this bank is, has definitely some weight to it. It's definitely not a lightweight bank, and that's because you have half of an inch of hardwood in the back. Now, because I start off with a thicker bank, that means I can also go more than an inch deep into the bank and still have plenty of room uh, for coins. So you see this coin definitely moves. It's not stuck against the front window or any sort of limitation in that way. And it's a good size. This is the default smaller size. And you can hold a ton of coins in this. And uh, of course, I offer the bigger ones and much bigger ones as well, as well as you know, totally custom however you want. Because as you'll see, I make every one of these myself in the shop. So before I glue anything, uh, first thing is to get the raw uh, kiln dried lumber into the shop. And then I use my table saw to chop it up into these sticks that you see here. And before I do the glue up, I actually use my router. And what the router is doing here is making them flat and parallel on two sides. And that's very important because when you do the glue up, you want actually, you know, perfectly dead on seams. And that means when you're gluing it, as you see here, everything fits perfectly. There's no voids, there's no sort of uh, issues, there's like rot or any of that kind of stuff happening because what I'm doing is cleaning them up every step of the way. After the glue is dried, the next step is to flatten the top and the bottom. Now that means that by the time all of this is done, I have a perfectly pristine piece of hardwood uh, slab to work from to make these custom banks with. Now my sort of day job is actually cncri.com. So we do custom fabrication, metal, wood, plastic, anything and everything. And I always envied some of my customers because they would have one or two products and that's all they would do. And they did, and they just constantly, you know, they, they'd make them in a machine and then if they could find, think of a little tweak that would save them two seconds on production over the whole production run, that would save them hours a week. And I was like, you know, that's a really cool business model. And I love to get into that sort of thing. And that's, you know, sort of why I started these banks. I do everything sort of custom all the time. And for some people that would drive them nuts, to me, I love doing that. But I also enjoy being able to reiterate a design and improve, improve, improve on it continuously. Now, we'll take a look at 
instance, for instance, a P. So I don't need to tell you which bank is version two, which one is version one. You can see it immediately. And that's one of my goals. When you get this bank in the mail, you can tell right away that it's actually functional and usable as a bank. Now, you notice that the bottom here is a lot wider, but you also notice the shape of the bottom. So by having a flatter, sort of flat shape, you also increase the area. Now you'll notice more definitely on the inside here, you'll notice this one is big, this one is a lot smaller. You, still still, you can still tell it's a P, but you can definitely see this is a lot more room in it. This is also fatter, so to speak, and the distance as well. But what's crazy is they're just about the same form factor. So they fit you know, perfectly one into the other, and you couldn't really tell the difference. But it's just optimizing the inside parts of the design. So that's what I enjoy about this business here is that I can just continually improve on things, even a little bit of a tweak. So for instance, you'll see this eye. Again, it's obvious which one is version one versus which one is version two. And just widening it up by half an inch, you know, might seem simple, but it's actually kind of complicated because I have a lot of other issues that I want to make sure I do. You know, I can make these banks for a thousand bucks and have an amazing thing with LEDs and waterfalls and falls and whatever. Uh, there's no point in making that because I won't make any sales. So I've always, I'm always trying to improve on the design to create and create a faster bank, a better bank. These are by far the best banks I've ever made, um, but also make them affordable for people. So if you choose the default on sandboxranch.com, you have a really good bank. And of course you can optimize and you can uh, sort of customize every aspect of the bank as well. So if you want to spend a bit more money and have something that's stained, something that's finished, you have a polycarbonate front or what have you, we can do that for you just as easily. This little part, when you first see this video going of changing the bits is mind blowing to me. I spent over 10 years with CNC routers that had no tool changer and being able to use a tool changer on this kind of stuff is just, I, I can't describe how wonderful it is and how many sort of production issues have disappeared since getting this machine to be able to do this kind of stuff. What I'm doing here is actually doing a test on one bank before I do all of them. Again, this is a new design. I've optimized the code tremendously, just the code to produce these banks themselves. And I wanted to double check things, uh, use new bits, new everything. So a lot of the aspects of what you see here might seem the same video to video to video, but they're actually quite different. And there's a lot of uh, optimizing in, involved with making a really, really good product. And this is a great example of that. Uh, I can control depths to you know, a thousandth of an inch depth and that sort of stuff, X and Y and Z. So when, you're when I'm making these custom banks here, uh, my goal is how can I make them better than the last time I made them? And that's just not the visuals, it's also the production end of things. Now, you'll see this happens definitely not real time. I wish my machine moved this fast, it'd be wonderful. Uh, but I can move really, really fast on these, but the faster you move, the more problems you might have production wise because what you do is add too much stress to the hardwood and that's how you get tearing and that's how you get sort of bits breaking and so forth. So the most common question I get on sandboxranch.com when it comes to custom banks is what is the difference between oak and poplar? Now they're both hardwoods. This is a softer hardwood and this is a harder hardwood. Uh, for this application here, there really isn't that much of a difference other than aesthetic. Uh, this isn't going on a rocket ship or anything like that. So. This is plenty hard and plenty strong and functional as a bank, as popular as it is with oak. Now the nice thing about oak is you have a very strong grain, as you can see. And it has a little bit of a warmer color to it. So with this one here, generally what you want to do, or if you want us to do it, uh, you could stain it with uh, tongue oil and it looks fantastic. It looks just as it is. This one here, you can stain with tongue oil as well. But the nice thing about Popper is that it really, really enjoys stains. And what I mean by stain is you can make this look like oak, you can make this look like cherry, you can make this look like basically any kind of wood you can think of. And that's the nice thing about this. This one here, you are paying a premium for it and because of that, you probably want to keep the oak. But this one here, you can make it look like anything. So it's, it's a wonderful bank uh, if you want to further customize things either yourself or have us make it for you. 
Now again, you can tell right away which one is version one versus which one is version two. And you'll notice in this case here, you see this the square inside part here? You notice this is rounded. Now by making it rounded, I've actually created an extra half an inch of inside volume, just or a surface area on the inside of the bank. Now you gotta think, well that's that's almost nothing. And it is. So you got about a quarter inch more wood here that's taken off, quarter inch more wood here taken off. Now you gotta think a quarter inch times more than an inch depth. And you create a space for another two or three or four you know coins. Same thing with the the overall shape. So you have a rounded shape here and you have a square shape here. So again, those little changes there done to the banks actually make them more functional banks while also making them stronger. So once the slab is done being routed out, I have to cut out the individual banks. For this, I'm using this little bandsaw. Uh, I definitely need a bigger bandsaw to do this at a better, you know, more efficient rate. But for now, this is fine. I'm basically cutting out every one of the banks and you'll notice that they all have a little skin around them at the bottom. And the reason for that is because although I have a vacuum table and I have screws and everything else to hold this in place, I still want to leave a skin on there just to make sure nothing actually moves during the production. What that causes me to have to do is actually go back and manually cut all the way around them. Now just this part here, I've optimized a ton of things about it. Uh, and then I have my router bank or my router table that I made years ago. And all what I'm doing now is shaving off that little skin all the way around so everything is nice and flush uh, for these custom banks. All right, so let's run through some of the banks that I've made in this production run and just to compare them to the other ones I had before. So again, it's obvious, some, most of these are pretty obvious, which one is version one, which one is version two. You notice here, this here was made a lot smaller for version two. And again, it's still a D, it still looks the same, takes up literally the same space, but you just have so much more room in the bank because of that. Here's the F. And that's a great example of creating more space in the same area. Now you notice this one here, you have a lot more space at the bottom across here. So everything was made generally a little bit fatter. And by doing that, more points. And here's the Q. So again, this thing here was made a little bit smaller. And I've also optimized this one a little bit further uh, regarding screw placement. Um, that's another issue we saw with their earlier banks is sometimes the little screws will come out. And the reason for that is pretty straightforward. Uh, wood expands and contracts. So for this production run and onwards, um, I actually use a smaller bit. And what that does, um, production you probably never even would notice. But what it means is there's less uh, material removed when I do the drilling operation. And because of that, there's more holding on to that screw because the last thing you want to do is give this to a kid and have all the screws fall out. Now that's not an issue that was happening often, it was just every once in a while a screw would actually get loose. And that's because I was removing too much material while doing the screwing, so. What you see here is that all of these already have holes in them. And the reason for the holes is because that's what I use for the screws. That's basically what the CNC router does is drill on the screws into the wood. And what the laser does is make the screw holes for the acrylic. So that means all I need to do is combine the two together once I remove the masking and right away the banks work right off the machines. So as you're seeing me making these banks, uh, you notice that I'm using quite a bit of machinery and also power tools and hand tools. And each one has their, their purpose for making these banks. Now the biggest thing is you'll see a huge router and what the router is doing is producing the wood component of this. And the router is a wonderful tool for that because it has a two-way feedback system. What I mean by that is it knows exactly how deep it's going into the bank. And so when I produce these, I can control every aspect of that. Now, if I were to use laser to do this, it wouldn't really be possible uh, cost effectively. I could definitely engrave this W into, into Poplar using my laser. It's powerful enough to do that. But the reason why I don't use the, the router to do the acrylic is because I want to flame polish on the acrylic. So you'll see that here. I don't know if the video is going to pick it up or not. But it's these little subtle things that I think makes a bank really spectacular. You know, 
I can use the router to do every aspect of these banks, but it's not the best tool to use for every aspect of those banks. And that's why I like having the diversity of equipment here in the shop so that I could pick the one tool that would do this one job perfectly and then pick the next tool that would do that one job perfectly. And that's part of optimizing the design. Now, sometimes it's not very efficient uh, production wise because of course, throwing a sheet of acrylic on this machine here and chopping it out to make the front is dramatically faster uh, than using the laser. But the laser produces a better result. What the laser also does is drill the holes for this. The very first time I made these banks, I actually, or the first couple of times I actually started making these banks, I would actually just make this solid and this solid, and then I'd go back over it with a jig, with a drill, and manually drill all these holes out. Now, the nice thing about doing that is I can control more of it, but the disadvantage of it is time. It's a big waste of time to have to be doing that when I can literally have this machine do the drilling and the next machine do the holes in the acrylic. So those little savings and times, you know, factor into making these banks affordable for everybody to be able to purchase online. Now the biggest waste of time I could possibly have making these banks is actually sanding all of them. And you'll notice here, I haven't done any sanding. I do a little bit of spot sanding sometimes where uh, some of the, the wood is a little bit ruffled or something like that. But generally there's nothing required to be done. And that's why having a very strong and a you know, 12,000 pound CNC router produces a really nice fine result. I use expensive bits, I use very sharp bits, um, nothing's dull, so that means whenever it comes off the machine, it's pretty much ready. Now, same thing with the laser. The laser is a wonderful laser, and it cuts everything to size, and everything's perfectly within you know, nanometers. So that means when it comes to actually putting the banks together, this is exactly what it is. There's no sort of finishing required unless, of course, you order that. So I hope this video uh, helped tell you and show you just how much work is involved with every one of these banks. Every aspect of it is optimized and made the absolute best possible. And every step along the way, I'm actually reviewing the bank, make sure it's okay. A lot of things can go wrong making these things, uh, but a lot of those sort of things have been taken out of the design uh, so that they don't happen. Now, the nice thing about going through every one of these steps is I'm reviewing every aspect of the bank, every angle, everything. So if I didn't see, see any defects or any sort of bad things with them, so to speak, um, they never continue on to the next phase. So that's part of the quality assurance that I have for Sandbox Branch products, is every aspect of it is reviewed and re-reviewed and re-reviewed across multiple days. I definitely don't make all these banks in one day, and that's the reason for it. You know, you need a fresh mind, optimized everything, you know, everything in your head is clear, then you do the next run, then you do the next run. So we're good for custom banks, any size, any shape, any sort of parameters you want to have design-wise, contact me at sandboxranch.com, we'll make it for you. And of course, you can order them, customize however you want, directly on the website too.